So first of all, let's um, think about uh, our discrete signal and imagine we have our discrete signal. Imagine we have a continuous signal rather. So this is our continuous signal which has some amplitude A and is changing over time T. And our discrete signal would be uh, a version of this or a representation of this continuous signal uh, measured at discrete points in time. So I'm just going to show each of those discrete points of time using my green dots. And our purple signal of course is our continuous signal which we would describe mathematically as x of t. So we're saying that this signal can be represented mathematically as x of t. Um, and the discrete signal is a, a representation of that continuous signal when it's measured at discrete points in time. So we measure at a time t equal to 0, t equal to capital T, 2t, so each of these points are separated by a sampling period t. So this capital T is my sampling period. Okay, etc, etc. And if we just looked at each of those discrete samples that I plotted there as green dots, each of those samples could be represented as a number. I'll throw in just a couple of numbers here. Um, so we might have values of 5, um, 7.5, um, 9.2, and so on and so on. And those discrete numbers there are the each of the green dots. And we would say that those green dots are our discrete signal. Um, and we represent those discrete those samples or uh, samples of the discrete signal as x of n. So that's the mathematical notation that we use to represent that sequence of numbers. And to summarize that process, we would say that x of n is equal to, that should be square brackets of course, to represent my discrete signal, x of n is equal to x rounded brackets n of t. So that t variable is my sampling period, so each of my samples is separated by this variable capital T, and n of course is my sample number. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to deal with is, well, this is a nice mathematical description of what a discrete signal is and a nice overview. Um, but we're really interested in, well, how do we actually get uh, a real world um, continuous signal? So some time varying quantity. Uh, so we'll just, we want to get this time varying quantity into a discrete form. Uh, well, the idea would be we take the quantity that we're interested in, which could be heat or light intensity or uh, the electrical activity of a heart or the distance uh, a pendulum is moving or anything. And we need to convert it into a voltage signal using a transducer. And the output of the transducer will be some voltage signal which is a representation of the time varying quantity. So we get a voltage signal out and then we can make use of an analog to digital converter which is our nice little electronic device which convert a voltage signal into our discrete signal. And I should really say it converts it into a digital signal um, because there are subtle differences between discrete and digital but we're not going to be too worried about it at this stage. So that is how we'd get our discrete signal and of course that discrete signal would be stored in the memory of probably a PC or some microcontroller. Um, but the discrete signal of course is just a sequence of numbers. Uh, so it's worth noting that the, con the, the quantity of interest is typically a continuous signal. So that continuous signal will exist for all time. The voltage signal which represents our quantity of interest would also be continuous. Whereas this of course, once it comes out of the analog to digital converter, it's our discrete or digital signal. Um, just be also aware that the continuous uh, signal is also referred to as an, an analog signal. 
and analog can be spelt with a, an extra UE at the end as well so that would be analog as well analog and this one would be digital okay also referred to as digital um, okay so that describes our discrete capture process we'll call that discrete capture process so that's how we would actually physically capture a real world time varying quantity um, or at least it outlines how you would do that um, finally we'd like to look at well how do we actually generate or uh, synthesize a signal and send that out to the real world um, well let's just maybe take an example I'll use blue. Um, let's take a, an example let's say so we want to create a signal called x of t uh, so we want to create some continuous signal x of t uh, we describe it mathematically first so I'm going to say it's um, 4 cos 2 t um, plus e that should be a plus uh, e to the power of t okay so that's the discrete signal or that's the signal that we'd like to synthesize this is the continuous signal that we'd like to to send out to the real world um, well to create our um, discrete version well basically we would sample this mathematical expression and the process to do that is to say x of n is equal to x by n of t where t is the sampling period that I'll use. Now it's important that you choose this value of t appropriately. Um, just looking at this signal here we have a, a sinusoid that's changing slowly less than less than one hertz okay so that sinusoid is, is oscillating at less than two hertz or sorry one hertz um, so I might say well there is a there's a process that you can use to to determine the optimum sampling period but I'm just going to say a, a, a useful sampling period here would be maybe a hundred Hertz okay that would produce a reasonable representation of this this signal um, now if I said the sampling period that we we should use is one one second or one Hertz so T is equal to one that wouldn't be appropriate um, and you can check that out in MATLAB if you wish okay um, so x of n is equal to n of t, so therefore x of n will be equal to, so this describes the capture process, is going to be equal to 4 cos by 2, and we substitute the variable t with n of t, okay, plus e to the power of n of t, and we would solve that expression then for different values of n, so in order to generate our sequence of numbers, so we'd have our sequence of numbers it's going to be equal to some sequence of numbers so we'll have question, question, sum each of those question marks will be a sequence of numbers and this first number would be determined by substituting n equal to zero into this equation so replace that n with zero replace the variable capital T with the sampling period and I think we get the example of a hundred uh, Hertz, so that would be t would mean be equal to 0 0.01. Um, so using t equal to 0 0.01 and n equal to 0, we get our first number. Our second number would be substitute n for 1. t would be the same value again, and we get our second number, and so on. And that's how we would generate our discrete signal x of n, which would be a representation of this uh, continuous signal that we'd like to create. But once we have our sequence of numbers, those sequence of numbers will be stored in memory somewhere. And once they're in memory, they're in their discrete form, I and mean, then we could pass it through what's referred to as a digital to analog converter, a DAC, digital to analog converter. And once it comes out of the DAC, so that my DAC is an electronic device that I can use to uh, convert from discrete or digital into analog or continuous the output of my DAC would be a voltage signal and that of course would be my continuous signal okay so that basically summarizes the content of the playlist um, I hope it was of some use and uh, I'll see you in the, in the next 